Hello, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. Welcome to March of 2024. We're going to talk today a lot about your wonderful money stories as they really get intense focus in some positive ways. Also, things to do with international travel and academic settings get a little bit of a highlight. And oh my goodness, we have eclipses happening. And this is one coming on March the 25th in your money possessions and earnings. So I'm going to dive into how that looks on you during this wonderful month of March 2024. And it's not a bad month, actually. There's more good stuff happening here than negative for most of us. So the first thing I want to say is welcome to my channel. If you're new, I, I am Lori Lothian using the Western Tropical Zodiac Whole Sign House System. Um, I love the fixed stars and the minor asteroids. I'm helping you time your best life using an astrology as a navigational tool. If you'd like to learn astrology, I'm teaching a class uh, starting in April. It's uh, six weeks long. It's called Sky Reader, but your own astrologer time your best life is the subtitle. I've taught it four times already. And if you want to jump aboard and learn how to be an astrologer in the very simplest way possible, I'll be teaching you how to learn the basics and understand how to use three very powerful timing tools that are simple to learn. Uh, to be able to fish for your own fish instead of me handing these fishes to you every week on Astrology Land. So check out the course below and uh, the information to get on the wait list is what you'll find in the description box underneath this recording. And that wait list is so you get early bird access, discount codes, and you get into the darn class, okay? I'll be opening the class doors for tuition and all of that enrollment sometime in the second or third week of March. So let's start off by talking about how this sky looks when you are a Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sun father and career and purpose, moon, home, mother and body. Listen for your rising sign for everything about you. I have a tutorial under here, how to cast your chart in whole sign houses and how to create your own natal chart and find out your rising sign. All right. Just so you know, whole sign houses, once you go whole sign, you never go back. The ancient house system, all the astrologers on YouTube are acting as if we're talking whole sign houses with you. So don't look at your plastic chart and get confused about, you know, what we're talking here. So the first thing I want to say, if you're an air uh, Virgo, which you are, or you wouldn't be listening to this, is that you have gone through a period of time where you had a lot of energy in February clustered up in your sixth house of work and health, and you're putting a lot of attention last month in this Pluto party, stellium and Aquarius sixth house to work and health matters. And that's coming to an end in the month of February, as your focus will navigate to the seventh house of matters to do with significant love relationships, business partnerships, and outreach to your audience, marketplace, and clients. And as that focus takes over, it's partly because of the movement of planets such as Mars and Venus into this part of your sky that represents those seventh house matters. We're going to talk first about the movement of Mars and Venus and Mercury in this month ahead into different places in your sky. Then we will talk about the eclipse and then we will talk about the chronological order of events this month. So to begin, the first thing you must be aware of is that what Venus does when she moves into your seventh house on March the 12th is exalted. Now, before that, she was really busy from February 16th to March the 11th, working on her health, working on your work routines and health routines, working on situations to get better joy and balance in your work, just maybe working on better outcomes for pets and pets, pet situations, even rental accommodations. But now she's no longer concerned with your sixth house and she's moved forward into March 12th, your seventh house of relationship where she's in what we call her exaltation. This can really open up a new energy in this significant love story. If you have one already, it's going to be a period between March the 12th and April the 4th that brings a sense of goodness to not only the union, but also to your partner who gets more lucky and great things happen for them. If you're single, it can be a wonderful time to begin a new relationship as well. When Venus is traveling this time around through your seventh house, though, she's joining Saturn, who has been here since last March and continues to remain in your marriage and significant love house until February of 2026. This is testing your relationship. This is Saturn saying, is it the foundation strong enough to last or do we have to end this thing? So for those of you who are already in existing relationships as Saturn entered there last March, you're in a testing window. And it can also make your partner sometimes a little bit hard on you and difficult to be with. But with Venus coming into contact with Saturn, moving through that seventh house co-present with him, 
between March the 12th and April 4th, you should see a loosening up and a softening up of some of the challenges and maybe a sense of we're in this together. You know, love is hard, but we can prevail. Let's make it work. That can be a great energy for that. If you meet somebody new under a Venus Saturn, it can also indicate love is hard, but we will make it work. Or you could get into a love relationship with an older person, significantly older than you. Now, March the 12th, the 14th, when she's traveling through here, she's also in co-presence with Neptune. And so this is an opportunity for your marriage partnership type significant love to take it to a higher spiritual level and to move into a more of a connection to the divine or into a more of a deeply meaningful, if not soulmate vibe with somebody that you're with. And of course, as Venus moves through here and connects with Neptune, which will be happening in April, like the first few days of April, well, that's really also potentially a story to do with finding a soulmate love for single Virgos already, especially Virgo rising. As we look at the story of Mars also now getting ready in the month of March to leave behind his six week stay in your Aquarius house of work, work is hard, I work hard, I am grinding, health, inflammation, rashes and injuries to the body, hopefully not too much, or Mars there, uh, just meaning like you've been making lots of changes in your work environment and maybe tempted to quit it even or be quit by it. That story with Mars in your workhouse last month in February was occurring between February 13th and March the 22nd. And he was tangoing with Pluto and that, and so was Venus. So it was a lot of intensity around work and health matters last month. But then on March the 23rd, and it continues to be sort of true through to March the 22nd, but he's getting rid of the influence of Pluto. He's moving further away from Pluto. So it's not nearly as intense. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, Basically, between March the 12th, no, let me think about this, between March the 1st and March the 11th, both Mars and Pluto are in your workhouse. And this can be love, hate, on, off, stay, go. So some of you are really in a push-pull about whether you want to leave or stay in a work situation or someone else in your workplace might be leaving and it can change you and make you bonify you and give you a greater position, higher raise or promotion. So a lot of stuff is still playing out because Venus is still in that workhouse, right? Until March the 11th. And so is Mars um, there as well until March 22nd. Let me get that right. So the first 11 days of March, a lot of Venus, Mars tangoing, 11, first 11 days of March, still lots of up and down in the work story. So yeah, first 11 days. I think I said that wrong at first. And then we move uh, Mars huh, forward into uh, Pisces. He's got a neutral dignity here. Venus is exalted and she's got the bossy energy over him because she's got superpowers here. So we see the two of them in the house of relationship when Mars catches up with Venus. So Mars will get there on March the 22nd and Venus will stay there as well until the April 4th. Now Mars is there for a long time, right? March the 23rd to April 30th. So I'd say to you, Look for the time frame of March the 23rd to April 4th, when we have both Mars and Venus in the house of significant love relationships. And look for that to be a very intense time of trying to decide about what to do, about separating or staying in that relationship if it is an existing relationship. If you meet somebody under this, it's going to be very intense, sexy, hot, fun energy. But if you're with somebody, I'd say that's a real turning point of decisions being made by you or your partner about whether this relationship wishes to continue. So keep that in mind. That's an intense window of time, um, March the 23rd to April the 4th. Mercury is the Lord of your sign. He's the guy that tells you what you're supposed to be looking for in life and what you're doing. He's the most important planet. And Mercury is moving through the sign of Pisces uh, until March the 8th. He's been there already in February. That could have been a lot of conversations and discussions, negotiations and deals, contracts, etc., with partners in business and love and also um, to do with signing contracts to do with um, customers, clients and the audience or marketplace for your work. But then on March the 9th, he leaves your um, Pisces zone and moves into a two month stay in your eighth house of chunky money. And this is a part of a longer story that last occurred in 2017 and is back to do with the house of chunky money and to do with a year in which we're looking at a lot of energy 
in the Leo, Sag, and eighth house part of your sky. Now, I have a Virgo rising daughter. And the last time we saw this happen, she got a bunch of chunky money into her life. All right, through a delayed inheritance narrative. Um, so you might want to think about what you might have been doing back in 2017 as a Virgo sun, moon, and rising. Because when Mercury sits in your eighth house for two months, which is an inheritance house, there's a possibility of getting money from inheritance or your spouse getting money from inheritance or you getting money uh, from a tax rebate or good chunky money outcomes, you know, um, so tax rebates, um, things to do with... Um, Oh, let me think about other options here for you guys. Tax rebates are one of them. Uh, maybe things to do with uh, sign-on bonuses, severance packages, stock investments, um, insurance payouts, those kinds of things. So this is a very important, or signing mortgages and documents around financing banking. So this is a window of time that is very critical to you and very rare last seen in 2017 around the same time of year right spring of 17. so we want to say between march the 9th and may the 16th you've got a lot going on including a retrograde if money is owed to you from the past for example it can come back to you which happened to my daughter if there's something going on to do with having to renegotiate contracts to do with real estate and property that might be really up for you as well things to do with financing refinancing mortgages investments and shared money with a spouse or partner are really big on your radar during that two months transit of Mercury. Now, Mercury spills secrets in the eighth house. And if there's any secrets that need to be spilled, they will be spilled by Mercury's two months stay. Bless his soul, right? Two months is a long time in that eighth house. I want you to consider that if Mercury has something to spill, he's the Lord of your sign and a spilled secret is a good thing. I know we're all afraid of secrets being spilled in general because we're afraid of secrets being told, but it can look really, really good on you because it could be a relief to find out something that you suspected or always wanted to know was true or not. And even including things with your childhood. So get ready for that opportunity uh, when he retrogrades, especially, but I'll get to that in a separate video. Uh, things from your past that you want to know that you didn't know can be told or understood by you. All right, now we're going to move into the eclipse that's happening in Libra. That's a money house for you. It's on March the 25th, <clears throat> sitting at five degrees of Libra, and it can open up a doorway of some changes in your earning structure. Now, you've got a south node eclipse cycle that started last year, October. There was an eclipse here on the 21st of October, 14th of October at 21 degrees of Libra, solar eclipse, ring of fire. Now here comes a full moon, things that started to percolate regarding work and earnings and money and resources are now taking another turn on the 25th of March, give or take a month before, in this case, six months after, for it is a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse can bring a completion or an end to an earning strategy, including a job. It can also bring just bring a change in your job and earnings. It can also bring some revelations or insights regarding the way you wish to make money and new opportunities can emerge from the new insights that are occurring here. And it's a full moon eclipse in the house of what you eat. If you have to get rid of an addiction, a self undoing, a cigarette, a vape, some bad habit, certainly eclipses in the house of what you ingest can be the beginning of an end of certain cycles of addiction or self de dependencies on substances that you should not put in your mouth. So that's a very auspicious part of the story. Now, especially later, but we'll get to that, you know, Venus will eventually trundle April 4th into your eighth house. And with her position there, she's also able to help you remove yourself from addictive cycles of, you know, whatever you should not be eating and putting in your mouth, but also bringing you chunky inheritance monies perhaps as well. You know, April 4th, add three weeks. If some of you are thinking that's something you're entitled to. Now, that eclipse, lunar eclipse, is definitely perhaps going to involve a change of job for you because Venus will start point in your 10th house in June and that eclipse is still rolling out as June comes. A lot of you are looking at a major change of job. The beginnings of that are happening off the March eclipse. Remember March 25th, the day of, don't expect everything to happen. Eclipses are a story that unfold over months, not days. All right, let's move into the next narrative. We're gonna talk hear about the story. Oh, did I tell you I'm teaching my Sky Reader class in the beginning? And if you want to learn astrology, you can do that with me. <laughs> I can't remember if I told you guys. But anyway, check it out. Uh, starting in April, six-week class. Oh my goodness, it's a long day of clients and recording for you guys. All right, so now let's move into a blow-by-blow 
blow by blow of the month ahead. This is my breakdown of the major transits that are happening for you in this month. The beginning of the month, we start with a really sweet sun sextile Jupiter that feels very positive. This is literally the sun moving through your house of significant love relationships flowing to Jupiter in your ninth house of foreign travel. It's possible March 1st and 2nd, you're planning a trip, taking a trip with somebody you love, or you're working on legal contracts and deals and negotiations that are going to have a settling uh, and finalizing impact during that time, especially because you have Juno, the goddess of contracts in the house of you right now. But Juno here also so is asking you to look at that love relationship through the lens of stay or go, divorce or separation or commitment. And the sun in the house of your significant love relationship flowing to Jupiter can be things to do with what you really truly want to accomplish in that relationship that's deeply meaningful to you in the question of whether it's a commitment to continue with. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, also good for um, legal contracts and book publishing, good outcomes regarding uh, academic settings and good outcomes regarding travel opportunities, especially if it involves a significant relationship travel opportunity. Now, Venus is going to square Uranus. Venus is going to create a surprise with the god of surprises to do with love and money stories. This is while Venus is still traveling through your money house, or earnings house, your, your job, I'm sorry. Venus is tra traveling through your work house, your work house, your work colleagues, coworkers, pets. Now it's a square to Uranus in the ninth house and that's the house of heaven. Hang on, I need to turn the heat down in here. I know you guys like, I'm itching myself. I can't even get the right temperature. I'm either freaking cold. I'm freaking hot. I mean, it's the bad, cold, damp Vancouver winter weather that I don't like. Remind me that I don't like this weather. So what happens here is you get this energy up. I hate to tell you, but, you know, Venus square Uranus in the sense could be the unexpected loss of a pet. I know no one wants to hear it. It happens or a surprise or ta-da, my pet's no longer here. I don't know. But it also can be things to do with work opportunities that are lucky and involve the word international foreign lands or academic settings. Okay. If you're a student, your job and your work is to be a good student. And there's a surprise element here, probably positive from Venus. Venus to Jupiter in her house and also to Uranus. So this particular Venus square Uranus energy looks really exciting, but it may be positive around academics, foreign travel, and things to do maybe with pets as well. Then we move into Mercury uh, flowing uh, to Uranus at the very same time this is happening with Venus. And Mercury's in your house of legal contracts, deals and negotiations, and significant relationships, some kind of surprising news coming from your significant other that could involve foreigners, foreign travel, or things to do with academic settings, or your own academic environment looking like good news is coming through, especially if you're in a college or campus setting or waiting to be accepted to a college of your choice. Those look really positive as well. Again, that is March the 4th, 3rd and 4th. When we move forward, on March the 8th through to the 10th, there's a lot going on. We have a new moon in Pisces. Of course, that's a new beginning, a fresh start in the house of significant love relationships, business partners, client audience outreach. Great time to start something new, like a promotion if you have to reach out to your audience or marketplace or hire somebody you know, to work with you. So new moon, March the 10th, wonderful opportunity in that area. And that unfolds over six months and two weeks as well after the lunation. And with Jupiter as the Lord of the lunation in your ninth house, it can also involve uh, a, a new beginning involving legal matters and legal contracts working out on your behalf during that time. With the Mercury conjunct Neptune energy on March the 8th, vision board, dream making, is really powerful. It is in the house of other people or your partner, and it can be there's some dreamy news coming from your significant partner that's quite exciting and lovely, but it's also a good time just for you and or your partner to vision board what you wish to dream into being with this relationship if you already have one. Would I start a new relationship with this? Well, you could, you could, but I, you know, I would also say it, when Venus moves into your... <laughs> Venus moves into your um, seventh house. That's when you want to start a new relationship. You're going to wait for that if you have any uh, sense of good timing. And again, that would be after March the 12th. On March the 
8th, 9th, and 10th, Mars is squaring Venus just as Venus did earlier on when she did the same thing on March the 3rd. Again, some surprises here. Now, Uranus is giving you unexpected developments in general since 2019 in education, higher education, foreign lands, legal contracts, spiritual belief and philosophy, and book publishing. It's all been kind of like up and down, third marriages, third long-term committed loves. It's been kind of erratic, right? And now Mars, Mars is going, okay, I got to square this Uranus after Venus did it on March 3rd. He's up to no good or too good, who knows, March 10th and 9th, 9th and 10th, 9th and 10th. And Mars might be saying something like, is it time to quit the job so I can focus on tra long distance travel? Is it time to uh, quit my job so that I can focus on my studies? Is it time to take better health measures uh, to improve my health in ways that involve, I don't know, foreign travel? I mean, it's hard to say what the square is, is about because Uranus brings surprises. So there's some surprising developments that can impact work, for example. Mars likes to end, quit, and sever things. And there may be some endings going on here for sure. And again, the same thing as Venus, it can connect to health matters with a pet. Jupiter rules your house of home, property, and real estate. And you guys may be looking at some developments here that have to do with home, property, and real estate and unexpected changes as well. That's one way it could look on the 9th and the 10th of the month. With Mercury sextiling Pluto on March the 10th during the mix of all of this, Pluto is in the workhouse. Mercury is in your house of chunky money. Now that can look like a really nice little window of time where you come into some money that allows you to quit your job, honestly. Or it can look like a great contract or agreement to do with work or rentals and financial arrangements to sort that out. Or even a stock investment doing really well, especially if it's an investment that you... Uh, you have maybe planted a seed there before and now you want to see it fruit. Mercury in your eighth house for two months can bring older investments back to life. And you may see some evidence of that beginning around March the 10th. Now, as we move into the 16th to the 19th or so, or the 18th, the Sun and Neptune will join together in your seventh house, just as we saw Mercury do on March the 8th, Sun-Neptune conjunction. Generally, it's very spiritually dreamy and quite wonderful, but it's uh, sun is a categoric meaning of career. But in your case, sun represents foreign land and sh far off shores as well. So foreign lands and far off shores may be calling you, beckoning you, March the 16th to the 18th to take a trip. Will you take the trip then or plan it? I don't know, but that's kind of a vibe. Sun, Neptune can be some dreamy, a positive trip to a foreign place with the one you're with, meeting someone new in a dreamy far off place that brings great romantic love to your life. Good for single Virgos finding someone that way. And also maybe dreamy love relationship stuff that includes an enhancement of your bed pleasures that move you to a more spiritual connection with the one you're with. Again, the 16th to the 18th of the month. And then on March the 21st through to the 22nd, Pluto and the sun form a flowing relationship to each other that's very positive. Sun and Pluto together are very powerful forces of co command and uh, authority and power. This is a sun moving through, at this point, your Aries eighth house of chunky money, and Pluto is the god of death in the house of debts couple thoughts. You may have a sudden opportunity or powerful opportunity, I should say powerful opportunity, to pay off a debt. This is something new. You haven't had this energy really before um, because of Pluto not being fully available to you. You may have had it last March, but I have to go back and check. But it's a relatively new signature. So Sun Pluto sextile at this time, March the 21st, 22nd, can look like an opportunity for a financial debt relief, for some money coming to you uh, through your work that is going to be very much like a, a payment, like here, here's a commission, here's a reward, here's an award, here's a big, a big commission of some kind. Because basically Pluto's transit through your sixth house is going to make you more powerful and potentially wealthy in the work you do over the next 20 years, Virgo, the work and service you do in the next 20 years. Father, father figures happen to belong to the category we would call um, the solar stuff, right? And the sun will be in a condition of being in the eighth house, but sextiling Pluto. But there can be some money from a father, father figure coming your way, maybe just some you know nice money coming your way anyway, 
from someone who you would consider an authority or a father figure uh, around the 22nd, first and 22nd of the month. On the 24th and 25th, a very lucky thing is happening. Venus and Jupiter are talking in a sextile. The nature of Venus, luck, luck upon luck upon luck, our sextiles are good with this condition. Venus, she's moving through the part of the sky that represents your significant marriage and love relationships. That's your seventh house. She's exalted here and she's in Jupiter's house. Jupiter is moving through Venus's house. They have a super, super, super sweet hotline to each other and they're loving you up. So what does it mean? Oh my God, the court case works out on your behalf. The foreign trip with your partner, of your beloved partner is all planned and going ahead or you're taking the trip or planning it and it's going to be wonderful. Your, your main squeeze partner, if you have one, get some kind of opportunity for academic success or uh, foreign job opportunities. You're getting major academic success. Your partner is getting a lot of lucky things happen to them that involve money luck even. So it's just such a nice sky. It's really good for stabilizing what is a difficult time with Saturn testing your relationship. And it brings a lot of goodness to the relationship as well. So this is going to open up a breakthrough energy for some of you or a sweet spot in longer term relationships that have been debilitated by fatigue. And if you're single and you meet somebody under this, it's going to bring in baked in positivity for a long-term relationship that can go the distance and maybe involve a lot of energy of spiritual common faith or travel to foreign places for one, one example. So it's a good beginning for somebody, something new if you're dating someone, that kind of thing. And then on the 28th and 29th or so, especially the 28th, Venus will give you a happy money surprise or a happy love surprise because she's flowing to Uranus and that's from the house of your marriage. So again, this is kind of like what we see on March 24th, 25th, getting more intensity on the 28th. They're all interconnected perhaps. Surprise! You get a proposal from your mar from your significant partner on the twenty eighth to get married. Surprise! Your marriage partner gets her dream, his or her dream job, uh, in, with an NGO, foreign country. Um, surprise! The judge says you get all the money and you win the day. March the twenty eighth is a very positive Venus sextile Uranus, lovely energy for sure. And it, definitely all of it benefits between the twenty third of March and the thirtieth, thirty first. Your marriage relationship. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> if you want to know more about me, everything's in the description box below. Um, this is being recorded for my Patreon community, February 18th, early access ad free. You want to get stuff early access ad free and you want to try me out for five bucks a month and take one Zoom call with me a month at that level of $5 tier and get two free classes, Sinistry, uh, the key, the relationship course, are you my person? And Chiron, the key to purpose. Those are offers to try me out. If you don't like me, you can always quit, but you get the opportunity to give me a try for five bucks and you get to keep those two free courses. So give me a try at Patreon. It's where I have the more intimate personal interactions with all of my followers and fans and subscribers on YouTube. Sorry about the sneezing, the scratching, the itching, the moving. Please don't troll me. If you think about my work day, I see clients, I make content for you guys, you know, it's and it's a weekend because that's when I see clients. I'm Sunday, it's a Sunday. So be nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a wonderful March, Virgos.